LeBron, Kenny Rota, WHBC, over here. How happy were you with the start after being off for eight days? And also, how happy were you that you were able to protect that fourth quarter lead tonight? Well, that was the mystery coming into the game of how we would come out. I mean, obviously, you prepare, you want to come out and play well, but you never know after an eight-day layoff. But the energy was phenomenal. Um, you know, we pushed the tempo, we shared the ball, we got to where we wanted to get on the floor, both offensively and defensively. We executed, and, I mean, a 30 point quarter after eight day layoff is a, um, it's a really good, really good quarter, and we held them to 18 as well. So, uh, you know, it was a great start for us. In the fourth quarter, having that lead and not really relinquishing it like you have in some of the games recently? I mean, just want to play the game. That's all. If we had lost the lead, just protect it and win the game. That's all. LeBron Scott Sergeant WFNY to kind of piggyback off of that coach prior to the game mentioned that the first five or six minutes could be a little dicey given the rest. How much of it was a concerted effort to not let that happen? Well, I mean, it's always a concerted effort, but you got you to go play. You can't just talk about it. You know, we can talk about it. Hey, listen, let's get off to a great start. You know, let's hold a team to, but you got to still play the game. And, you know, um, I just liked our energy. Our energy um, was very, very good and, and it sustained. You know, and like like I said, that was the mystery because when you have an eight-day layoff, sometimes you can, you know, you can come out with a lot of energy, and then it can just go away because you've been off so long. But you know, for the most part, for 48 minutes, I think it, we 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 kept that level of intensity up and the level of energy up, and um, it worked in our favor. Brian Skronsky, WMFD Sports. You were just talking about the energy that you played with tonight, and we talked to a bunch of season ticket holders that thought maybe the environment tonight, as good as they've seen. If you would just talk about the atmosphere and how much of a difference you thought it made. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, this is home for us. So, you know, our fans do a great job of giving us even more extra energy. I mean, it's phenomenal. You know, they're phenomenal for us all the time, man. And uh, tonight was no different. So, you know, we definitely fed off them. We try to get them, you know, things to cheer for, you know, plays to root for, and uh, try to make our fans proud every night we go on the court. Ron, last year you very graciously offered to pay Dante's fine when he was suspended against the Raptors, which I think was eighty dollars. <laughs> um, he got fined two thirds of his salary tonight on those texts and uh, ejection. Or will you make the same offer? Uh, I actually uh, told him. First of all, I said I was going to pay the fine before I even knew what it was, so you know it didn't matter. Fair it, point. Didn't, it didn't matter. Uh, and I told him tonight. I said, "Listen, Dante." All right, now enough is enough. You're going to stop getting kicked out against Toronto all the time, all right? Man, stop paying your damn fines. But, uh, yeah, he don't have to worry about it. He's good. You've played all these teams throughout your career over and over again in the playoffs. Um, and, you know, since 2010, no one's beat you in the, in the East at all. Uh, and I understand you're trying to get to the finals, trying to win, but within these series, how do you keep it fresh, especially after you've you've piled up victory after victory against these same teams? Well, I don't I don't uh, think about the past or the future. I worry about the present, you know, and that's all my whole mindset is how we can get this win. Um, and today, game one, how we can get this win, how can we play, what can I do to help our team be successful? Um, so that's how I'm able to stay fresh because I don't I don't think about the past and. You know, uh, like I said, the, f the future is a, is a mystery, so yeah, I got to live in the present. I almost feel like I'm always asking you about running into somebody, but the beer, the beer lady, did you? How did that happen? Did you see what she was doing? Oh. <laughs> nah, I was I was upset at myself because I had an and one opportunity and I didn't finish. I left it short, and uh, you know my momentum just took me to the sideline, and I'm not going to run over our beer lady, you know, and. Uh, and she had one, you know, in her hand, so I took it out of her hand. But not much of a beer guy. If she'd have had some red wine, I probably would have definitely took a sip. <laughs> Jason Lloyd, The Athletic. Uh, first of all, kind of piggybacking off that, there's the story of Joe Montana in the Super Bowl seeing John Candy in the stands and pointing him out. And you've, you've had things like this in the past. Are you trying to keep the mood light? Do you understand what you're doing? You you know you're going to get a reaction from the crowd. You know we're going to ask you about it. Is it something in the moment, or do you are you processing that you know this is going to be a thing? No, it's just in the moment. It's just in the moment. Um, I don't I don't I don't I don't plan for things like that, man. I, I remember one time it happened in the moment too. Uh, years ago, my first stand in Cleveland, we played in Oklahoma City, and um, 
I think I was, I think it was my first in Cleveland, or maybe been in Miami. I went towards the other end of the basket, went out of bounds, and the little kid was eating French fries, and I took mm-hmm. one of his French fries. I didn't come into the game saying I'm gonna find a kid with some French fries. I'm gonna take it. No, it just happens. It's just like kind of spur of the moment. And um, you know, I remember last year, you know, in Atlanta, you know, I was going towards the sideline away from their basket, and it was a it was a pregnant lady. pregnant lady. It was a pregnant lady sitting right there, and I was like, oh, like we need you and that baby to be healthy. Let me slow down. So you know, it just it just happens. It's just I don't know. I don't I don't do it to get a reaction. It just kind of happens. You know, everybody's a part of the game. You guys are a part of the game. The fans are part of the game. People from our concession stands are part of the game. Everybody. So. Why not feel? Why not feel welcome? If real quick, if I can change gears, when I don't remember what game was Indiana. You said you really liked where you guys were at, and you thought you were really close to. I know we've talked about a lot about a layoff, but do you still feel that way? I mean, this looked like probably the best game you guys have played yet in this postseason. Just in a in a big picture of things, are you pleased with where you guys are in the direction you're heading? Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm okay where we're headed. I'm not pleased. I'm not satisfied because um, it's still so early. But at the end of the day, I feel like we're we're making progress and being a team that we want to become. And uh, tonight was another step in the right direction. I think we had there was some few plays that I can I can think about, and I'm, that's playing in my mind now. Where we could have been a lot better, you know, making multiple effort. You know, um, there's a couple of plays where we gave up some shots where nobody was around in the contest. You know, I know it was a couple of serve shots, uh, four. DJ Tucker shots, a couple of Norman Powell shots where guys are just not around. I mean, we, we can't have that if we want to continue to be, uh, you know, as great as we want to become. But uh, I like the direction we headed in. LeBron Brajewski, ESPN 990. Uh, similar to what Jason was just asking you, uh, just the cohesiveness of the team uh, with D. Will and Kyle and all the guys being integrated now into the team for so long, the health of the team. Uh, it, are you guys now playing at a level that you hadn't yet, that you've been taking little incremental steps throughout the last series, and today was kind of a, a crescendo of a, a, of a new level of, a, of just a cohesiveness, playing true to your identity that you want to be at? <clears throat> well, I mean, listen, anytime we get a 25-plus assists, you know, we had 26 assists on 39 field goals. That's very efficient, very, very efficient. And, um, and we only had uh, 12 turnovers, and I think, I think we had like four or five of them late in the game. Where You only had four turnovers. Through three quarters, well, that, four t- exactly. So uh, that lets me know that we're playing, you know, very um, consistent ball. We're doing what we doing, what we need to do. The the game plan that our coaching staff has given us, we executing it, and um, you know, so that's letting me know we're moving in the right direction. And um, you know, if we if we just keep doing that every game, then we'd be we'd be a very good team. Chris. LeBron, Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. A lot of the guys in the locker room were talking about the practice time that you had in between series. Practice wasn't something you guys did a ton in the second half of the season. So where have you noticed the most change within the team since practicing more? Well, I mean, I mean like you said, I think we practiced more this week than we did in all of March. And um, obviously in March was a heck of a month for us. We was on the road a ton, you know, and uh, we didn't get an opportunity to get out on the floor, we, you know, because of injuries, because of flights, uh, because of being on the road so much. We didn't get a, a lot of time to actually put in what we wanted to do to, to get better as a team. So. Um, you know, this week we had, I think we had five days of practice and, um, you know, we did everything from game planning when we knew who we were going to play after the series ended with these, with, with Toronto and Milwaukee. We, we, um, worked our habits defensively, worked our habits offensively, got some more continuity things put together. We got some, um, got some great conditioning in and conditioning in as a team. So, you know, like I said, we did a lot this week, um, you know, because we had the practice time and we we're home. So it, it definitely helped us out a lot. With the vertical, um, LeBron, early in the game, uh, you and Kyrie had that uh, two-on-one break, and you, you're pointing toward the sky right away, like you you want the ball thrown up high. Um, what's what's run through your mind through that play? And also, do you feel like right now, physically, you're like probably the best you have felt since you returned? And just uh, where does that extra motor come from? Um, yeah, I seen the play developing um, all the way from the defensive side. Um, you know, I played the passer lane on the throwback to Serge Ibaka at the top from Kyle Lowry, and uh, and I was able to uh, get it to Kyrie. And you know, I seen Lowry kind of chase uh, Kyrie down. Not not very, not like he wanted to get the ball from Kyrie, but um, I think he maybe thought I stopped running. Uh, but when Kyrie, <laughs> when I hit the ball to Kyrie, and he kind of looked at me, I told him to throw it off the glass, pointed to the glass, and. Uh, 
or or you could say to, I told him to throw it to the sky. I like that better. It's a little higher than the glass. Uh, but I don't know, man. Just you know, just I train my body every single day to be in tip top shape, and um, I feel real good. I feel real good where I'm at today, and uh, hopefully I can just continue it. Dave McMenamin, ESPN. LeBron, how did you feel like as a group you guys respond to trash talk? Uh, is it an individual thing, or do you feel like uh, there's a team demeanor in, in how you respond to it in, a, in the course of a playoff game? Um, I, I'm not, I don't really get involved in it too much unless someone says something to me. I mean, then I'll, I'll say my piece and keep it moving, but um, I don't even, even be knowing what be going on out there, man. I'll be, you know, I. Well, that's kind of a lie because I actually see everything and hear everything. Sorry, Dave, we're much better than that. I shouldn't have lied to you like that. But I do I, I focus on what the main thing is. The main thing is to win. I see it going on. I hear it. But I don't really get involved in it unless, like I said, someone say something to me and then I can do both.